If you want to stay up to date with all current hip hop events and releases, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and hit that like button. It really helps me out. All right, what's up, guys? So today we're going to be creating a tier list for Logic's whole discography, and we're going to be comparing projects and putting them into these ranks, starting from S as the best one, and then going down from A through F. I've already dropped a video a couple days ago talking about every Logic project, but I think this one will also be interesting as I am comparing projects and putting them in in a ranking rather than just talking about them independently. So this one could be really interesting. I know this is not a very original idea, a lot of people have done this, um, but I do believe that these videos are always interesting because um, everyone has their own opinions on projects, and it's really interesting to see how people, you know, what people do and don't like about certain projects from Logic in this case, but in general. Um, I also want to do more of these videos in the future, like ranking artist discographies, but we're going to get into that later. And from now, I would say we, we start by trying to rank his, his discography. Um, the first placement is going to be tough because from that on, we have to, of course, we can rearrange it later. But of course, from that, we have to like go above or below. Um, so yeah, this is going to be tough. One last thing, I have found this tier, um, this tier list, this tier um, thing on tiermaker.com. I'll leave the link to this specific one in the description. If you want to check it out yourself or, or um, do it yourself. Um, but other than that, I would say let's get into it. Um, so what I can say is that, for example, I do believe Confessions of a Dangerous Mind is Logic's worst project. Um, so that we could put that in an F category. Although I wouldn't say compared to other projects that it would be in the F category. That's kind of tough. So we have to... Um, arrange something from this but let's put it in the F category as like a reference and from where we can work ourselves up I would say Under Pressure is definitely his one of one of his best albums might even be his best so I'm gonna put that in the S category um, and from here on we we can kind of like go down and break it down for example I think Young Sinatra 4 is the worst of the four Young Sinatras so let's just put this in the D category, just because I don't think it's terrible. It's just compared to the other ones, I think it's it's the worst one. Um, now let's put Undeniable. Undeniable is probably my favorite Young Sinatra mixtape. So I'm going to put this in the A category. We're going to be rearranging these throughout the video even more, but just so you, it's kind of like a first idea. Um... Welcome to Forever, I would also put in the A or B category, but I do really like my Welcome to Forever. It's just a hit after hit after hit. We're going to be putting this in A for now. Supermarket, a lot of people hate on it, but I don't think it's a terrible project. I think it's on par with Young Sinatra 4, um, which many people don't think it is, but for me, it is. That's why I'm putting it there for now. Maybe I'll even move it up to the C category later. But we'll, we'll have to see, um, no pun intended. Um, moving on, we have everybody. Everybody, as I've already talked about in my other video, for me, it fails to convey the concept that it has, which I think is a really cool thing. It fails to convey that musically convincing. Um, that's why it is, I would say, one of Logic's, you know, worst projects. Um, but not in the way that I think it's a, it's, it's a really fitting ending to the whole trilogy of Under Pressure, The Incredible True Story and everybody, but I don't think the music on here, the sound that it had was really, you know, picked well to, to convey, um, the message. And that's why I'm going to be putting it in the E category, just because I think compared to Young Sinatra 4 or Supermarket, I don't like everybody as much, but it, I would say it's better than Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Logic really hit a low in his career with the Confessions of a Dangerous Mind um, project. So there's no um, talking about, like arguing about that. Um, what do these things do right here? Oh, that's that's pretty cool. We can rearrange them ourselves, but I'm not going to do that now. Going further, we have the Incredible True Story. Now, I know a lot of people would put this up here with Under Pressure in the S category. I don't think The Incredible Story is just up there. But I also feel bad putting it next to Under Pressure and Welcome to Forever just because these two, I think, are such a legendary era in Logic's discography. 
Um, and it, it kind of feels wrong to put it next to them, but then also putting it in B is just undeserving for the project. So that's a hard one. That really is a hard one. We might have to... Damn, this is this is this right here that's hard to decide. I'm gonna leave it like this. Maybe I'll change it later on. Let's go into the Bobby Tarantinos. I think Bobby Tarantino one was better than um YS4 and Supermarket, so I'm gonna be putting it here. I think it like it was logic kind of um experimenting a bit more, kind of having more fun after like just years of serious projects and especially after the two year streak of under pressure and the incredible butcher story, he was kind of like trying to find an outlet to have like a more fun and up up turn turn up um type of music and i think it, it really worked we have great tracks on here we have um the slave uh, one and two on here we have 44 bars on here we have the incredible intro with illuminatra that goes into flexicution that is still one of my favorite intros to any project to this day um so i do i do think that is a really good album and it, it did have me like maybe it's just because i had too much um like my expectations for ys4 were too high and then it kind of disappointed me but i would say that bobby tarantino is still better than why young sinatra 4 supermarket everybody or confession of a dangerous mind now going from here bobby tarantino 2 i remember really well when this came out this was like also um when i was like really into logic um and i would say it's on par with the first one i wouldn't say it's better i might say it's better actually bobby Tarantino 2 was just way more perfected than the first one um it was a lot of more it was a lot of like like a, a lot more trap heavy you know also the features on here we had um we had two chains on here we had big sean again on here um Although Pusha T was on Bobby Tarantino 1. I'm going to put these next to each other equal right now. But I'm not sure if that's the correct way. Um, Alright, let's get into the last two. Young Sinatra, the first one though. I would honestly say it's here. But then it's kind of weird to put it next to The Incredible True Story. Just because The Incredible True Story is just on like a, on like a conceptual and on a on a mastered level, like way above Young Sinatra, the first one. So it's really tough to rank these just because I have like a, I have a deeper connection to the first albums to, you know, Young Sinatra 1, uh, Young Broken Infamous down here, or these two mixtapes. Um, but objectively, I would say The Incredible True Story is better, so I'm going to put it here, although it does, it does have crazy tracks on it. Like, ah... This is a tough one. This is a really tough one, especially now getting into Young Broken Infamous. Young Broken Infamous, I think, is like a really great debut mixtape that Logic dropped. Um, I would even say I think many people underestimate it. Um, I just put it here, but that's just to put it somewhere. Um, where I'm going to I'm going to reorganize it in a second. But um, I think Young Broken Infamous is really it. The, of course, the jump from Young Broken Infamous to Young Sinatra was also a big one just because then Logic was really taking off and like taking music like as a career 100% seriously when he like, you know, he quit his, his, he had, you know, at the time he had like, I mean, he was taking like a year off when he was living with Big Lambo and he, he, Big Lambo gave him one year to focus on music and that's uh, within that year he signed to, to Def Jam. Um, but I think going from Young Broken Infamous, which kind of featured kind of just like thrown together songs um, from different producers and different styles. And sometimes the vocals aren't perfect just because Logic didn't have the equipment to record. Compare to Young Sinatra, Young Sinatra, Young Sinatra 1, of course. Young Sinatra was, of course, way more um, mastered and perfected um, than Young Broken Infamous. But I do love my Young Broken Infamous just because it has a lot of great tracks that I think many people underestimate. Um, so it would be kind of tough to put it here just because I think it ranks higher. You know, if it's a, if I would have to give it a grade, I wouldn't give it a C. It's kind of like a, if I would give it an actual grade, it would be like a, like a B plus or something. But in this, in this cat, in this whole thing here, 
I kind of have to to put it like that just because these five projects up here are so much better than it. Um, and that's why I think it ranks here on par with Bobby Tarantino, Bobby Tarantino 2. Um, although I'm not sure about that. I really don't want to move it down here. I feel like that would just do it no justice at all. But this is, it's somewhere in between here. It's like in the middle. It's in the middle just because the Bobby Tarantino mixtapes were really, they were from top to bottom. They were top-notch production. They were um, Logic trying new things and trying new things really well. And I don't think it's kind of on par with it. But it does hold a lot of emotional value just like all the mixtapes do. Um, and that's why that's a hard one. So it's like a, in between a C and a D. But um, that's my, I guess that's my tier list. I guess we, we made it. Um, I, I've, I've been listening to Logic for, you know, the first song I heard was All I Do from the first Young Sinatra mixtape. Um, so I've been aware of him and listening to him for a long time, and I've grown with his projects over time. Um, so his projects do mean a lot to me, and I can, you know, assign um, a certain project to a certain time in my life, and that's why they have a, I have a strong emotional connection, especially also to the mixtapes, but also to later projects. And that's why this is kind of, it's, it's really hard to do just because I can't really objectively look at the music on the records and judge them by that just because Logic has had such an influence on me in my life and as a person. And, um, but this is what I came up with. Um, let me know if you agree. If you don't agree, um, let me know what your tier list would be. Um, and I'll leave the link in the description if you want to go check it out yourself. If you want to go make a tier list yourself. Um... And I'm, I want to do this for more artists. Like, I'm thinking, you know, J. Cole, Kanye. Um, like, I've been really getting into Brock Hampton lately. I could, like, do a thing like that. Um, but I, I'm, I have that in my mind. I may, may do some more like this in the future. Um, but, yeah. Um, I guess this is where we're at. And this is my tier list. So, as I said, this is it. And if you've watched this video to the end, I would really appreciate it. If you would like it, subscribe. Turn on notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. You'll have a really good day.